highway of the ego. I've always been intrigued by how God uses certain things. Uh, you really need to listen to me. I have a long way to go. Very important, interesting facts and details. Uh, but we need to stay together. Now, God, like you already can imagine, if we don't already fully know, is such a God that for him to use symbols and elements is because there's so much content within. Here is the way I deal with God. When God says something, I proceed from the premise of knowing that there is so much about that thing that I am yet to discover. And until you embark on a voyage of discovery, you never fully tell why God uses certain things. Until you study. I've done this teaching before, but this is coming as an expanded dimension. The highway of the eagle. Here is the, here is the first, uh, you know, the, 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 there are a few questions I will ask you, and, and I want you to think about it. Why is the eagle consider the king of the birds. Am I right? Is the eagle not the king of the birds? He's the king of the birds. Why? As of today. <laughs> as of today because an animal dethroned a lion, right? <laughs> he sent me something. Alright, now why is the eagle the king of the, of the birds? No, you will. I will answer. You listen to me. <laughs> I'm going to answer, but he's correct. It's one of the many key attributes, but we need to break that down. The question is not here, is it? This is the month of radical wisdom. Somebody say radical wisdom. Radical so, what makes what wisdom is contained within the ego that God and man pronounce him the ultimate? There are two birds principally that is used to relate to Christianity. If I want really to Christians, the, the Holy Spirit is referred to more as a, you know, the, the symbol is not, the dove is not the Holy Spirit. It's just a symbol. Because again of the virtues, one of the many virtues, let me talk about that, about a dove, the reason why God uses a dove is because a dove is considered a very clean bird. One of the few birds that operates monogamy for life. Once a dove starts mating with another dove, until that partner dies, a dove never mates with another partner. Isn't that incredible? Amazing bears. So that's one of the many reasons why a dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. It talks about purity. That's why the, the, the Bible doesn't just call the Spirit Spirit. It calls him Holy what? Spirit. So that adjective holy is very important. All right? Now, when it comes to the ego, here are a few scriptures that I want us to start with before I get into some very powerful slides you need to see. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter number 30 from verse 18 to 19. Proverbs chapter 30. Get ready to write or pick the CDs better still so that you can listen fully. In Proverbs chapter 30 from verse, I'll read, I have it here. The one I want you to read, I'll tell you. In Proverbs chapter 30, 18 to 19, there be three things which are too wonderful for me. Yea, the fourth, which I know not. Number one, the way of an eagle, what? In the air. This is Solomon, the wisest man in his days. He said, as I observe creation, there are some things that are too amazing. So, to my mind, Solomon was the first zoologist. Is he a zoologist? And, you know, if I studied the first uh, Iberian science, you know, a branch of zoology, am I right? He, he was the first to study it. He saw some elements of the ego. And he wrote that and said, this is amazing. So, the Bible acknowledges what I call here the highway of the eagle. The way of an eagle in the air. It is why the eagle is considered the king of the birds. Can I have an amen? amen. Now, another scripture I'd like you to see is Psalm 103 and verse 5. I'm going to come to more scriptures as I run through the points. Look at this. In Psalm 103 and verse number 5, can I read for you Psalm 103? It's very important we have some scriptural foundations so that it, we don't turn this to a science class. Psalm 103 verse number 5, look at this. The Bible says, who satisfies thy mouth with what? With good things. So that thy 
youth is what? Is what? Is renewed like the what? Like the eagles. Before the first school of zoology or avian science was ever established, God spoke through the mouth of Solomon that there is a renewal process that the eagle goes through that makes him look younger and younger. You know when you tell a lady today you, you are looking younger, you are actually deceiving the person. Because it's not possible for the person to be looking younger. No looks are deceptive. You are not looking younger. Face the truth. <laughs> you can't be looking younger. You are getting older. You may be looking good, but not younger. The eagle, watch this, is one of the few creation of God that can actually become younger. And there is a wisdom contained therein that we've got to adopt. If you read all the translations, it renders it sometimes more profoundly. The ego can change from being old and actually become young. Here is the way it works. So I call that the personal reinvention, you know, the, which increases your growth capacity. Watch this. Here is the story of the ego. Of course, it's been known that the ego has, generally speaking, the, the longest lifespan among birds. The ego. Okay? In its 40s, when the ego grows up to 40 years of age, amazing. Its long and flexible talons, you see the talons, the claws of the ego, it's actually flexible. He has the ability to be able to not only punch it into a prey, but fold it so that in the midst of the flight, the thing will not drop off. So that long and flexible talons can no longer grab prey, which serves as food. And you, the moment you can hunt, you can eat, you will die. So, so, and the same way, its long and sharp beak becomes bent. Over bent, that the ability to now use it for the kill becomes significantly diminished. So as a result of that, then the ego is left with only two options. That's what happens to often, or very often to many of us. Are we together? We often come to a point in our life when we choose to either accept circumstance or violate the circumstance and the boundary and push forward. God's counsel for us is that we don't become victims of circumstances. Whatever life throws at us, we have the capacity to reinvent ourselves and come out better. Amen. I thought I would get a better email. Amen. So in the same way, the ego has two options. Option one, which unfortunately, over 80% of the human mass opts for. The option of settlement. The option of giving in or caving in or resigning or accepting status quo. Most people in life choose to accept whatever life throws at them and they comfort themselves by saying, que sera, sera, what will be, will be. They comfort themselves to say, in all things, give thanks to God, the devil is a liar. Amen. If it is not a counsel of the Lord, listen to me, you can overcome. Amen. I didn't hear that, amen. amen. So, or go through a painful process of change. The, 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 the big difference is that very few people have the wisdom of the ego to subject itself to the process of change. You know why most people don't want to change? Change is costly. Change demands a sacrifice. Change will alter many things about you. And more people are afraid of change. So they rather submit to circumstances. In the case of the ego, his change process lasts a minimum of 150 days. A minimum. Watch this. Now, here is the process for the ego. The process requires that the ego fly to a mountain top and sits on his nest. Why a mountain top? True change cannot be done in the midst of the public. You need a place where you are alone with God, where you can go through the process of becoming better. Can I have an email? Yeah. So he seeks the mountain top, and I will show you scriptures when I give you all the principles later. I enumerate them, about 13 of them, when I'm done with these pictures. The process requires that he goes up there so that no distraction. You remember the story of Jacob. When Jacob wanted to wrestle with God, what did he do to his family? He put his family on this side of the fourth chapel. He crossed and said, listen to me. My life has come to a crossroad. 
It's either I choose to change or settle for mediocrity and less than what God has positioned me to be. So he says, stay here. I'm going to be with God. Until God touches me and changes me, I'm not coming back. Oftentimes, the place of change is a place of seclusion. It's a place of aloneness. It's a place of aloneness with God. It's not a place of popularity. It's not a place where many people can go with you. Nobody can go with you to the cross. Nobody can go with you up the mountain where you're going to sacrifice. Whenever you want to have that transition, popular opinion doesn't matter. You need to learn how to separate. Now, when the ego gets there, here's what the ego does. There, the ego knocks its beak against a rock until it plucks it out. It keeps knocking it, knocking it, knocking it, knocking it until the big falls off. It's a bloody experience. He does it without resort to settlement. He does it until the big, he knows that if I don't get a new beak, I can't eat. So I better take the pain now in order to be able to hunt later or choose not to take the pain, the sacrifice, the process, the recall and die out of salvation. There is no easy choice in life. But people who make progress like you must make the hard choice. Amen. I didn't hear an amen. amen. Now look at the next process. So he says that, now after plucking it out, the ego will wait for a new pig to grow back and then with that new pig that is now sharp and effective, he takes his talons one by one and pluck them out. Plucks out his own talons. Self-afflicted, self-induced, self-generated. Why? Every time you've got to make process, uh, progress, nobody can do those things for you. It's either you do it yourself or you forget it. Very important. So he will block out his talons. Then, when his new talons grow back, the ego start plucking his old aged feathers. All the feathers around it, he will use the feather Lock everything out. It's a process of personal reinvention. He must go through it. It takes about 150 days. When the ego has done that, after five months, when the, the new feather has grown, then the ego takes that famous flight of rebirth. When he does that, he can live anywhere from 10 to 30 more years. So an ego, sometimes in extreme condition, can live older than human beings. Why? Listen to me. It is always impossible to be able to become the best you need to be if you don't go through this process. Am I correct, man? Amen. You've got to make up your mind. You've got to make up your mind. Life is always an option. Choose the easy way and come out twisted or choose the hard way and come out ramrod straight and right. Have you heard it said that the reason the river is always bent is because the river avoids obstacles. When the river is going through this part and he sees this uh, pillar, he's just going to say, I don't have time to deal with you. It just goes this way. When he meets another one, it comes this way. When he meets another one, it comes this way. Crooked people are those who avoid obstacles. They don't want to confront situations. And listen to me, child of God, the moment you are a child of God, everything that comes your way, you have the capacity to overcome. Amen. That amen doesn't show you believe me. Amen. Can I hear you say, I can overcome? overcome. Say this way, all things are possible oh, because I'm a child of God and because I'm a believer. Can I have your amen ring loud? Amen. So, why is change needed, before I wrap up this and get into my details on my note, why is change needed? Many times, in order to survive, we have to start a change process. You can't you can hang on to the old and experience the new. The mediocre standards must go for excellence to come in. It's a choice. You can't hold on to mediocrity and choose excellence. You can't hold on to bickerings and murmurings and grumbling, petty jealousy and sin and want to grow up in righteousness. It can't work. It's a simple choice. I can't want to have peace and harmony at home and be fighting always like a child. It's a simple choice. It's a simple choice. Everybody has got to make a choice in order for the process of change to happen. We sometimes, in order to change, need to get rid of old memories, old memories, old habits, past 
traditions. It is only when we are freed from past burdens that we can take advantage of the present. Very important. Do you know what God said to the Israelites? He said to them, before you enter the promised land, there's a city you must go to. It's called the land of Gilgal. The word Gilgal in the Hebrew means Gilgal. It means to roll away. God was simply saying, you can't enter the new land of promise until the old has been rolled away. So he said to them, what do you do? When you get to Gilgal, sharpen the, the sharp knives of recircumcision. Recircumcise the people. The new land offers new opportunities, new heights, new glories. You can't operate the new operating with the mindset of the past. It's a simple choice. It's got to go for the new to come. Can I have an amen? amen. So it's only when you are free from past bodies that you can take advantage of the present. Let me tell your neighbor, your today and your tomorrow is better than your past. Come on. Amen. Look for another person. Help me preach. Use the preacher's voice. Your today and your tomorrow is better than your past. Amen. Let me have an amen if you believe that. Amen. If your tomorrow is going to be better, which I know it is according to scriptures, Amen. then you've got to be somebody that must get ready to let go of the past bodies in order to be free to soar. Amen. Can I have an amen? amen. Now, let me do this and, and get into a few things. Now, in order for you to achieve desired change, six quick things, that's not the end of my message. I need to get into it. That's why I'm in a rush. Six quick things you must do to achieve desired change. Number one, you must improve your personal discipline. Listen to me. Wise people are disciplined people. If you can't improve your personal discipline, your personal capacity will never increase. I just came back from a preview, you know, from, I, I just flew in this morning, they can, uh, uh, Robert picked me up at the airport this morning. You know, I'm trying to start a program, a PhD in organizational leadership at Regents. And uh, been admitted, so I went there for a couple of things. And here's what they told us. They said, if you are not ready to give 30 hours every week, you can't survive our program. So here am I, extremely busy. I am so busy. It takes those who are around me to know. And now they're asking me that I must add another 30 hours to survive my PhD quest. So it's a simple choice. It's either you are ready to give the discipline or work out and remain at your present level. And there's no hard and fast rule about it. If you choose not to give the discipline, you remain at your current level, period. So I choose, I said, I can make it. If others survive it, Pastor Philip Ibnijesu will survive. Amen. <laughs> and what's it going to take? It will take some decisions. There are some people I'm just going to say, my friend, if you don't have something meaningful to say on the phone, I'm done with you. Bam. I have no time to waste. Some things has to be cut off. Amen. Some things has to re-happen. Why is that so? You must improve your personal discipline to actualize change. Amen. Can I be honest with us as you look at me? Yes. You know, that's what makes us pastor. We like to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. A lot of us hate change. Mm -hmm. A lot of us hate change. Mm -hmm. We choose status quo. Yeah. We rather remain where we are at the little corners and just say, I don't want to be troubled, I don't want to be bothered. But remain constantly small. The truth is you don't remain small, you actually diminish it. You actually diminish it because life is not stagnant. Life is constantly progressive and dynamically so. So the people you think you are on the same level, by the time they leave you, you are no longer on the same level. So you've got to change. It's going to cost me money, it's going to cost me time, it's going to cost me sleep, it's going to cost me friendship, it's going to cost me a lot of things. Why do I need this? I'm not trying to impress anybody. I just know I need it for my next level of experience in God. Amen. Personal discipline number two, you must improve your ability to focus. You must improve your... To focus is to eliminate the unnecessaries in order to give higher attention to the necessaries. Amen. You've got to eliminate. You have to improve your ability to focus. Number three, you must improve your personal effectiveness. How can I gain 30 hours? I've got to be more effective. What I used to do in 10 hours, I must do now in 5 hours or 6. What I used to do myself that I can delegate somebody and pay, I've got to give that person the assignment. The television has to be shut down. I like to listen to news, 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 news. Now I have to reduce it. After all, listening to news doesn't put a degree of money in my pocket. <laughs> I have to improve my personal effectiveness. I've got to be sharper. I've got to be quicker in my thinking. I've got to be quicker in my decision making. That's why 
sometimes I'm very almost intolerant of people who are slow. You've got to move fast. The Bible tells me in Isaiah chapter 11 that he will make us of quick understanding. Amen. Is that not what the function of the Holy Spirit does? Amen. You cannot be of quick understanding and not improve your personal effectiveness. We've got to make decisions on the spot. We must have it all figured out, factoring very quickly, process the information, and churn out a decision and move on. And move on. There's so much mileage to acquire. There's so much grounds to gain. So much to achieve. You can't afford to be slowing down. We've got to improve our personal effectiveness. Number four, you have to improve your love for work. It's called work, 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 work. Ladies and gentlemen, work came before a cause. Work is not a cause. God gave man work before Adam fell. Work was given in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. Adam fell in Genesis chapter 3. That devil is a liar that tells you that work is a cause. Work is a blessing. My father walked he that to and I walked. John 5, 17. It is, it is of me to do the will of him that has me while it is day for night coming when no man can walk. Improve your love for work. If you don't love to walk, you cannot change. You, you've got to learn to love to walk. Learn to walk. Learn to sit down. Give attention to details. Think it through. Apply yourself with all the diligence in order to become better. I hope I'm helping somebody this morning. Amen. Number five, learn to take initiatives. Learn to take initiatives. Don't wait for the Holy Spirit in everything. The reason he gave you a brain is so that you can give him some peace. <laughs> learn to take initiatives. Take initiatives. Do what is right. Listen to me. I believe it is better to try and fail than to try nothing. Amen. I repeat. It's better to try and fail than to do what? Try nothing. Because every time you try and you fail, you become better than somebody who has never tried anything. You gain what is called experience. You gain experience. So try something. Take initiatives. Try it out. And then, of course, I'm not saying don't do your homework, the planning, the strategic thinking, the alignment, you know, the scenario forecasting and all of those things you do in order to succeed in business or any endeavor, engagement or program or, or pursuit. Do all of it. Put it all together. But then ensure you take initiatives. Number six. Number six. This is very important. Learn to master yourself for what? To maximum impact. How many of you know, looking at me with your nice looking dresses this morning, you all have a weakness, like I do? Yes, yes, yes. Is anybody without a weakness here? Yeah? want to show you the biggest lie in the house. <laughs> we all do. Yes. So the ability to deal with your weakness, to, to master yourself, has a way of helping you and putting you on the right path to becoming better. The ego knows his weakness. I'm the king of the bed. But people don't understand that I'm struggling to use my talons. I'm struggling to use my beak. My, my, my feathers can no longer fly like it used to. I'll give you some stats in a moment. So what do I do? I separate myself. I pull it out. I need to do what? Master myself in order for my impact 